crappy week. It's so crappy, in fact, that I don't want to talk about it. It's so crappy, in fact, that I had to run up like a 1.7 mile hill. This isn't even the whole hill. That's like two thirds of it. I didn't even film the rest. My week was stressful and emotionally draining and um, yeah, I, 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 a couple points I just felt like I wasn't coping at all. Ironic, right? Like just this past Monday, I was having a great week, I was feeling good, but you know, life right now in these COVID pandemic times, uh, it's crazy friends. It's just literally crazy. Kind of as I was reflecting on that yesterday after my run, I really wanted to come here today and I wanted to stop doing get readies with me. And I wanted to go back to Monday Mix Plate where we talk about a variety of topics because in some ways we have to keep moving forward. Um, so I just felt like I wanted to do that and I wanted to talk about a bunch of different things and I didn't want to be distracted by putting things on my face and so I hope um, you feel good about this as well. I want to talk about some products. I want to talk about a TV show. I want to talk about formulating products. I want to, yeah, just feel normal for a minute, okay, in this video. So let's go. Since I kind of mentioned how my week was going, let me give you an update on the project I'm working on using Pacifica Beauty products. So this past week, I was using their Coconut Milk Cream to Foam Face Wash. I was using their toner, which somehow didn't make it on this, this area. I was using a mixture of their Dream Shot Ceramide and Rose Serum mixed with their C and C Love Serum and then topping it all with their Cosmic Shield Hydration Lock Face Cream. In the morning time, I would wear sunscreen. At night time, I would try using their micellar water to take off makeup and then using this cleanser again, and then going through that same serum mixture and cream mixture. So it was probably Wednesday, I think, that um, I had to stop using that mixture the Pacifica products because my emotional state was just really high and I needed to go back to the products that I was very comfortable with using and that felt very comforting to me like in an emotional sense. <laughs> because some of you mentioned this last week when I was talking about these products but they are heavily scented. And so using a Pacifica Beauty centric routine was really starting to feel a lot for my senses. And so as my emotional um, turmoil was building, like I just couldn't deal with the fragrance. So I had to put them all away. I had to put them in timeout. It says nothing about their performance other than I just couldn't deal with the scent. So I think already I'm calling it that I cannot do a full Pacifica centric routine. I'm going to have to incorporate some products at a time simply because the smell of just all this artificial fragrance was just too much for me. So I'm going to go back to using them kind of one by one and then we'll talk about them in that way. Already I've kind of eliminated out like we're gonna say a hard no on the coconut milk cream to foam face wash. Here is a small little clip about how it foams. It actually is a really nice feeling cleanser, except that it leaves this weird texture on my skin. And I don't know how to explain it other than to say that there are some other oil emulsifying cleanser ingredients that do the same thing to me. One of the very common ingredients you're seeing right now in oil emulsifying cleansers is this ingredient. This ingredient is partially an emulsifier um, and what it does is it's oil soluble and when you mix the water with it, it all is supposed to come off. A lot of people use it. There's some very popular cleansers on the market right now that are using it. It just leaves my skin with the weirdest tack. 
I've played around with it a lot as an ingredient, trying to be like, oh my God, great, this is what I'm going to use to in my oil cleanser to emulsify it off. And I just don't love it. I am so picky. And this, unfortunately, kind of gives me that same like weird not dry, but this like sort of like almost squeaky, waxy, weird feel. So this guy, out. The other Pacificus products I'll still be playing with. So I mentioned that I had to go back to like a comforting, familiar routine. And that was using my non-emulsifying oil cleanser, removing it with a warm face cloth. Um, second cleansing with the Pa'akai cleansing cream. As you can see, I didn't buy this that long ago. I'm burning through it because it's just so soothing and wonderful to me right now. I would have to mist with the Josh Rosebrook hydrating accelerator because for some reason that just that marshmallow soothingness just was really peaceful to me. Then I would top it off again with my tried and true beloved while at a skin food light. And of course, I was back to my impeccable skin all week. We've been running down, um, running around quite a bit, and this was just feeling so right. All right, now that I've updated you, let me tell you about a little bit of new, new in my life. This is Bathing Culture. It is a gigantic bottle of body face wash and it came in the Beauty Heroes May Discovery box. If you're not familiar with Beauty Heroes, it's a beauty discovery service. They feature green, clean, mindful, transparent beauty. And um, I'll put all the details below. It ships monthly. This was by far one of their heaviest, biggest boxes they've ever sent out. I am a Beauty Heroes ambassador, so they send me the box to try. Now, bathing culture, what is it? What's coming in this box? First of all, this gigantic tub of body face wash. Bathing culture is a brand that's kind of all focused around sort of these very mindful bathing rituals. So this is an actual traditional soap blend. It's got coconut oil, I believe it's got olive oil, it has shea butter, it has glycerin in it. Um, it is very creamy. I have taken to using it in the kitchen because it's very fragranced. It does have quite a bit of slip as a body soap, so that is really nice. And of course, it doesn't leave the skin feeling dry at all. But because the scent is so earthy and foresty, they call it the Cathedral Grove scent, um, it feels really nice and luxurious and fancy for me to have it in the kitchen, most of all where my kids can't like get a hold of it. The next thing that they feature is this eight ounces of Outer Being Face and Body Oil. This is a gorgeous blend of oils for the body. It has jojoba, MCT oil, which is from coconuts, sea buckthorn, obsidian oil, marula oil. It is heavily fragranced. The scent reminds me of the Osmia Organics water body oil. I would say if you're sensitive to essential oils, I would not use it on your face at all. In fact, it is a little bit heavy for me on the smell, even though I do enjoy it. The next thing that you get is this Golden Hour Hydrosol. It's a blend of Neroli and Rose Hydrosol. It has a lovely smell to it and it's so refreshing and nice to use with the body oil. So that's three gigantic full-size products. Like I said, it was by far their most opulent box that you've ever unboxed. More on that later. I'm gonna be trying the products all month and like I've told you guys before, here and on Instagram, I won't be giving you any final recommendations or doing a review until towards the end of the month. And um, I just wanted to give you a heads up if you were looking to try this brand or you wanted to pick up this box, those are my quick first impressions. So I will say, if we were to compare these two products, the Outer Being Face and Body Oil, while I do really enjoy the scent, this is a little bit strong for me, 
And to be honest, I've gotten really spoiled by the Free and True Body Serum. It's so lightweight, it's so nourishing, it's so gentle on the scent that um, I'm still really loving it. I know I'm gonna go through this and I'll use it because I love that earthy, um, evergreen sort of cedar vetiver scent, but I don't know, that's just, we're just really connected. Okay, now I wanna talk to you about a show I've been watching on Netflix called Unorthodox. Have you seen it? It's amazing. It is the story of a young Hasidic Jew in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. It is loosely based on a true story. It starts off in New York and we see this young girl um, getting ready to leave her home and flee um, this family and life and culture and community that she's grown up in. And she flees to Berlin. I'm not going to tell you too much about it, but I was just, in the first few minutes when I found out that she was fleeing to Berlin, I got really into the show and I got really attached to her and just watching the show. So part of the reason I really was drawn into this show is because they spend time in Berlin. And I have had this long time obsession with that city. Uh, when I was in college, one of my art classes, we went there on a 10 day trip. And it was a very powerful, transformative trip for me in that I was just so overwhelmed and taken with the city of Berlin. It just, it's such a paradox. It's got such a um, subliminal culture going on. It's so vibrant and alive and just powerful. You can feel the powerful energy there that I was just so in love with watching these scenes of her going around in Berlin. And um, so that was part of it. But then the story itself is obviously super powerful and beautiful as we're watching this young girl just kind of throw off this culture that she grew up in and experience life on her own and sort of the the pull and the just complexities of that so I highly there's only four episodes so I highly recommend watching it all right that's it for this video I wanted to update you I am doing Sunday morning coffee talks on green beauty theory my other Instagram account so if you want to check those out I'll be talking about sort of green, clean, mindful, transparent beauty culture. Um, and I'm hoping to have special guests. And so, yeah, check that out. And um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye.